Monster. Hey everybody, and I am disappointed and fired up. Washington lost a must-win game here. Um, we, we got trounced by the Panthers. I, there's no other way to put it. But something interesting happened, and it made me want to call, it, call an audible for the start of our show. Taylor Heineke went into this game at the end, and those who've listened to this show a long time know that one of our original co-hosts, Robbie Duncan, he played with Taylor for a couple years at ODU. So I called an audible. We got Robbie on the phone here. And we just want to get, Robbie, your take on seeing, you know, your quarterback, a guy you loved for as a quarterback for a couple of years and, you know, couldn't stop singing his praises, I remember. You got to see him play for your home team. And so I wanted to give you a minute to, you know, say hey, because uh, we haven't talked to you in forever, but wanted to let you talk about Taylor, man. Yeah, uh, got to say it's pretty surreal. Um, you know, I imagined... Taylor somehow ending up on Washington's football team because, you know, the quarterback position has been a disaster for a long time now. Yeah. But, uh, you know, just seeing him getting his chance finally is, is pretty relieving and, and rewarding at the same time. Uh, he, you know, he came in with the world against him, so to speak. The odds were stacked against him, at least. And he, he came in with... Uh, you know, he came in and just played his, his uh, butt off. He played a little gutsy and led the offense pretty efficiently. I mean, I, I think you have to – you can't deny the accuracy and efficiency between him and Haskins was on a different level. And and the thing is, the crazy thing is, Heineke hasn't even played in the NFL for a couple of years now. He was on the uh, XFL before they got their season canceled. He was a backup for um, – the Atlanta team. He oh, wasn't even the star. So it's, hey. it's pretty remarkable to see him finally get that chance with the team that from a coach that, that knew him prior with the Panthers. Hey, Robbie, so my instant view of Heineke was that he didn't have the strongest arm in the world by NFL standards, but he obviously knew the offense well. He saw the field really well. Uh, you know, really, some of those passes weren't 100% accurate and all that, but more or less he was accurate. So that's my my instant thought was very smart guy from a football standpoint. Accurate arm, his downside is probably arm strength. Is that fair? I mean, By NFL standards. Yeah. That's fair. But I, at the same time, his accuracy is is really good. Um, I think a lot of what he showed tonight was the same tailor that I played with in at back in my ODU day. Very efficient. Creates the field well, takes what the defense gives you. Um, when he gets heat, he knows how to find his, his hot route or to dump it off to the running back like he's supposed to. He, he doesn't take a, a lot of unnecessary risks, and when he does scramble, he's smart with it. He, he'll slide and, or get out of bounds, and, and he's just efficient. It, you know, he's not going to wow you, so to speak. He, he had a lot of wow plays in college, but in, in the NFL, I don't see him, you know, lighting guys up with his arm throwing, you know, 60 yards downfield like, you know, <laughs> like some uh, Herbert or, or Josh Allen or even Mahomes. But he, he, he can uh, make things happen with his legs, and I think he's a good game manager type quarterback for the NFL level. He, he uh, you know, that the pass, that fade pass that Cam Sims dropped was an outstanding pass. You know, I, I, was, I was amazed that – you know, that that was such an accurate, good pass, and Sims should have had it. Tough catch, Sims should have had it. But I don't think Heineke rattles at all. He didn't look – he got thrown into lousy circumstances, and he did. He absolutely looked completely calm, in control. The team followed him. I was very impressed with him. You know, and I'm, I'm going I'm to sound like a, a homer or whatever when I say this, but that is exactly what he was like at ODU. Never – the big moments were never too big for him. He was always calm, cool, and collected. Didn't sit, talk a lot, but he always was just so poised and, and calm in all these big moments that we faced when we were at ODU. That I was not surprised. You know, mm. I don't know about I don't know about Stephen Montez, but in that situation, you know, if you have to make a, a quarterback move, Taylor would is the one to do it with because because of 
how calm he is and how poised he is when he plays that, that position. Well, there's no was, question you don't throw a practice squad rookie in for a division championship game. That's just crazy. But, the, I mean, the, I can see the argument being made because Montez was there since training camp. He's been there for on this team longer than Taylor has. So you could make the case for it. But Taylor did have, you know, starting experience for a game or two and had been on some NFL teams before right. that. So um, it made, that makes more sense, too. Well, I, I think the thing that surprised me, one, his ability to scramble. Uh, you know, I didn't think he was going to be that mobile. Um, in mm-hmm. fact, he might be the best quarterback in terms of scrambling that we have on the roster at this point, which doesn't Montez is pretty athletic, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't seen him. Montez well, can run. That's true. That's true. We haven't seen him in yeah. the NFL yet. Um, but, you know, that surprised me. He got robbed on that first touchdown pass, though. I'll tell you that, Robbie. You, you, your guy oh. probably would have won that game if – because that holding call was pretty ticky-tack, in my opinion. Oh, but, yeah, it really but, was. Very soft. Um, I mean, and, and take take, uh, take away the bad call by the refs on the scoop and score. I mean, yeah. that should have been a touchdown that they just totally robbed us because they felt the desire to have a quick whistle when anybody, any other ref or uh, ref team would have let that play out like it was supposed to. Well, those yeah, refs sucked. I those I have a rant about the refs. We'll save them, you yeah, know, we'll since save you're on the phone. But, Robbie's off yeah. here, but I think we yeah. all kind of are pissed at these refs, and I'm, I'm pissed at a lot of people for this loss. But you know, you know, well, it, it sucks though because you know this should be a great moment for, right. you know, for my fellow ODU teammates and ODU fans in general because that was that was our quarterback for a lot of people. Taylor was I'm trying to make a correlation. Taylor was uh, our Tim Tebow, so to speak, for Florida. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he he put us on the map with his quarterback play, and um, so that was a big moment for all for all ODU fans and Monarch Nation, so to speak. But um, it's kind of bittersweet because they still lost. I just wish they had made the switch sooner. Yeah, have I, you I, heard I, from him since he's been on Washington, Robbie? No, I, I haven't tried to reach out. I, I figured he gets a lot of notifications from all kinds of people anyway. I, I don't try to, you know, You don't start chase anymore. anymore? Yeah, I, 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 he knows he's got my support. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you do reach out, you know, you should congratulate him for getting another start here because, you know, it, it – He's had a tough road to, you know, get those starts. I know that. Well, he didn't get a start, but let's hope oh, he maybe okay. gets the fair. next week. Yeah. yeah. I think we'll see him starting at this point if, if Smith still can't Oh, yeah. Play. yeah. Haskins is done. Uh, you, you kind of tipped us to a story uh, before we hit go here uh, that Haskins, you know, didn't even do his press conference, um, which – he could get fined for that, I believe, Steve. You're, you're, yeah, you're yeah, the CBA says that they have to do media, and so if he was scheduled to do media and just bailed on it, yeah, that's a finable offense for yeah. sure. Yeah, uh, he's done. I, I would not be surprised if he's off the team by Monday morning. Yeah. At this point, what is he going to be on there for for another week? Well, the reason he would be on there is their salary cap reasons, unless they just want to take a hit for him at this point because it doesn't really matter, you know. You would know that answer more than I would. <laughs> they would take. They would. It would cost more to cut him than it would to save him. But on the other hand, what are they? They've got twenty plus million. I mean, what are they going to do? Uh, I mean, they don't need the space. They could get rid of him. Actually, yeah, it would cost money, but they could get rid of him and be fine. I, I I have a question, more elaborate question for you about that, but we can talk about that later. Yeah, let's um, say that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Robbie. Um, you know, I promised you we'd only do about ten minutes. A- anything else you want to say? Uh, just about your your guy getting his shot. Uh, anything you want to close out? I know we haven't talked in a while on the show, but, you know. It's all good. You know, I, I'm not going to make any kind of, like, pro- proclamation or anything like that, but sometimes a guy just needs his shot. And, you know, and, and you know when you watch a guy play, you can tell if a guy has it. You know what I mean? Sure. He may not be, he may not be a, a long-term solution or, you know, even on the roster next year, but – he, he provided a spark. He gave he gave the team a chance to win at the end. Um, I, you know, I, I can't be more proud than what he did, even if that is his only game he plays for for my favorite team. It was really <laughs> cool. 
and, and very surreal to watch. Right. So, now, he's I, technically I, a Georgia guy, so I'm, he's, I'm assuming he grew up a Falcons guy. But still, he, he you know, he, he went no, to the use of... Actually, he is actually a Packers fan. I remember that now. Oh, he's, he's a Packers, Packers fan. Oh, okay. I would argue he's probably a Washington fan right at the moment, but a childhood Packers fan. Childhood? That explains why he was wearing number four. Yeah, I knew he rooted for the Packers when we were at ODU and all. Ah, I, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, Robbie, thanks very much. And, and I know this is totally spur of the moment. Thanks for taking some time out of yeah. your, your evening here. I know you're on a, you know, you're not home. So thanks very much. And we won't keep any more, but we just thought it'd be real fun to have a little mini reunion and let you, uh, let you praise your guy there for a yeah. minute. Yeah. It's my moment. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's your moment, Robbie. It's not it's your his. NFL it's not role. Yeah. <laughs> it's your NFL moment. <laughs> right. Well, no, Robbie technically had uh, the long snapper from ODU who played for us for one game, right? Th- that other uh, buddy of yours. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a little bit better than that, though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is yeah. the quarterback we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Robbie, I hope the wife and the family are doing well, uh, you know, and I hope you guys take care. Stay safe and all. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Talk to you later. Bye, bud. See ya. And that's all, all right. I wanted to do there. I think that was good. Filled some. Minutes. By the way, people, if uh, don't don't bust Robbie too much for his audio. It was completely last minute. He was totally unprepared. It's not his fault. He's we just on had the road some... right now. Technically, He's yeah, it, it wasn't. It was. Uh, yeah, it wasn't his fault about the audio. So sorry about that. But there's, you know, it was totally last minute. Yeah, yeah, and that was a last minute audible by. Uh, I just kind of threw that out there, and you're like, "Yeah, let's do it." You know, let's that, call him. Let's see if Robbie answers the phone. And right. lo and behold, Robbie did. Yeah, that was great. Um, good to have Robbie on, Steve. We should get into the meat of this yes. game. Um, you have a, you're upset about the refs. I'm upset about the refs. Let's yeah. start with the refs. We don't ever. Can we start with about refs. stats so it doesn't okay, bug me? Okay, we'll start with stats. I know we're technically midway through, but you can do your stats real quick. But we haven't done the stats. Yeah, we yes. have to do the stats because right, it's important to note that Dwayne Haskins was 14 for 28, 50 percent completion rate, 154 yards, two interceptions, two sacks, and a quarterback rating of 36.9. Heineke and the fumble exception thing. Whatever. We'll get we'll get to that. Uh, Heineke who we just talked about was 12 for 19, 137 yards, 102.3 rating and one touchdown in what a quarter or so uh, less than a quarter. Eight yeah. Minutes. Antonio Gibson, 10 for 61 Taylor uh, Heineke was three for 22 rushing. McKissick was four for 15. Peyton Barber was one, one carry for 10 yards this time. Good for him. Then we had the busted Logan Thomas fourth down play just Insane. Um, J.D. McKissick was the leading receiver, 8 for 77. Uh, Cam Sims, 3 for 63 on a whole bunch of targets. He had, what, nine targets. Yeah. Uh, Logan Thomas was um, – sorry, there's something in my ear again. It just drives me insane. Um, Logan Thomas was 7 for 63. Steven Sims, 4 for 52. Robert Foster, 1 for 28. And Taylor Gibson, 3 for 8. And on the Panthers' side, Teddy Bridgewater, 19 for 28, 197 yards, one touchdown, one interception, quarterback rating of 85. Uh, leading rusher was Curtis Samuel, 7 for 52, which was the one long 45-yard run and a bunch of other stuff. Mike Davis, before he got hurt, was four for 14 for 28. Um, Receiving-wise, Curtis Samuel was a big receiver, 5 for 106. Robbie Anderson, 7 for 39. DJ Moore, 5 for 37. In terms of sacks, Cole Holcomb was credited with the sack. Montez Sweat credited with the sack. Deron Payne and Chase Young all had sacks. And then the interception was Cam Curl. And that is stats. Oh, and um, the uh, Trustway, did Trustway out punt the offense? He was 3 for 154 yards so no. this time. He did not outpass the, uh, punt the offense. He technically outpunted Dwayne Haskins, though, it, it, right? I mean, uh, no, he tied Dwayne Haskins. Oh, he, Haskins, he, 154 yards ah. passing. So, wow, that's right. Ha- odds of them tying, you know? <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. No, not good. <laughs> no, not good for either. Well, good for Tress, I guess. I don't think it matters for Tress. By Tress's standards, that's not a lot of punting yards. Yeah, yeah. By well, his stand, he's punted a lot. Yeah. Um. Well, all right, let's get into this. Like I said, I want to start with the refereeing because we don't, I don't think we've ever done that. Um, But it was a badly ref game this time. It really was. Um, Um, First of all, I don't like bitching about the refs generally, but the fumble, let's start with the fumble, assuming kind of in order the bad things. 
the Dwayne Haskins clear forward pass that they called a fumble. Yeah, I don't know how anybody can look at that and claim it was a fumble. And yes, the ball was sort of loose in his hand because he'd been hit. But the bottom line is he, he his hand pro- on it. his hand propelled the ball forward, and the ball was even spinning a little bit. Right. I, I, that's just the most stupid, insane call uh, I've seen in a long time. I just how on earth do you get to that point that you say, yeah, that's a fumble? Well, uh, just so terrible, terrible a- call. I don't know if you probably didn't watch the 49ers uh, Arizona game. It was not on in my locale. No, no. Uh, uh, but I watched some of that yesterday. Oh, and... that was that the yesterday game? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I saw like five minutes of it. Okay, well, it. there was a fumble just like it. However, here's the difference. I think it was uh, – was it Beathard who did this? Uh, I think it was Beathard. His hand – the ball does go forward, but his hand is, like, flopping in the wind when it goes forward. Haskins, you still see his thumb and, you know, his ring finger and, you know, pointer finger still firmly in on the ball in a right. grasp. When the he, ball was kind of moving in his hand, no doubt, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Because the arm gets hit, so the ball right. wobbles. But, yeah, that's not a fumble. I'm sorry. It was a terrible call. Yeah. And, and I thought, like you pointed out, I thought that was a really ticky-tacky holding call on oh, yeah. the touchdown. That wasn't a touchdown, you know, the Heineke to, uh, I forget who it was. Was it McKissick? Uh, uh, no, wasn't that, was that Logan? Whoever it was. Or, yeah. Whoever Logan it was. Hunt. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, the, the refs had a bad day. I don't know what they were looking at. That wasn't the only call. There were a couple other calls that were terrible well, in there. The, the big one Robbie mentioned, too, the fumble that they blew dead after the ball was on the ground. Clear, Obviously a fumble. Yeah. I, I mean, his knee was not, was like six inches above the ground. Right. It was obviously a fumble. I forgot about that one. It, this terrible, well, call, and, terrible and call. The worst part is that the whistle, uh, you know, I saw people putting freeze frames up. The whistle doesn't, you know, get called to that ball. Like, well, here's what really scrum. befuddled me. I'm glad you brought that up. Here's what befuddled me about that. These bums didn't whistle dead the Haskins one. Right. And yet they whistled dead this one. And, and the NFL, it, like this year, has been – historically kind of letting these plays play out Mm -hmm. so you don't have this situation and so why on earth did they feel the need to let the haskins fumble that wasn't play run out and then this play you immediately blew the whistle right i I just i don't know what these those um refs need to be fired Uh, you know i I hate to blame and loss on the refs and i'm not going to do that here because washington played the game that they played which wasn't good right but the refs made this really hard, and they definitely gave an advantage. You know, it was advantage Carolina. Yes, put it that was. way. I mean, Carolina didn't even get a penalty called on them until the fourth quarter. Uh, which, you know, look, I'm not one of those people who says penalties should always be called kind of evenly. Uh, you know, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But there, you can't tell me that that's the case with this game. It's kind of like this was a game where you see in the NBA – where the home team gets 35 foul shots and the other team gets seven. Right. That's what happened today. Right. And it gets as an fishy. analogy. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the NBA is, of course, famous for hinky refing. Oh, they, they had, they're not, I mean, they I, had yeah. a corrupt ref. Yes, I know. In the, in, you know, in the conference they title got, game. got arrested. So, yeah. Um, who, who refed a conference title game. Right. So, yeah, but that's another story, another podcast. Another podcast. Um, the, Next thing, I actually I'm gonna do an airing of grievances. We're doing festivals okay. on this. <laughs> Ron Rivera and Scott Turner screwed this game up by not pulling Haskins. First off, you should have benched him outright for you know the stuff that happened during practice and all that uh, on Tuesday. You know, are you talking about the mask? The stuff? mask, yeah, breaking I, the COVID I, protocol. I don't. I couldn't care less about the mask. I think the mask is dumb. I, I mean, I definitely would have started him. I, I would. I, I think if you're here, are the rules. You broke the rules. You get benched. You know, the good good coaches do that all the time. Uh, I heard somebody uh, the other day had a story about Michael Jordan once got benched for being late to a team meeting, and in college, you know, like that. If you break the rules, I, you should get I've not heard that. Yeah, I, I mean, he broke the rules. He got punished. To me, it was enough. I mean, I, I don't even want to – I hear you. But I, I've tried to defend Haskins a little bit here and there, probably more than most. But this I game was and freaking – I both have at times. Defend. Yeah, and I think it was fair because I do think he's got a ton of arm talent. And Washington, there's no doubt Washington has not handled this kid well at all. But today, he was just absolutely horrible. No. 
you know, terrible, terrible, terrible. Even if you think he could should have started the first half, there's no way anybody. Why I wouldn't have let him come out for the second no, half. I no, would have had Heineke in there to start the third for quarter. that second half. Yeah, and, and that, frankly, if you'd done that, you probably would have won from what we saw with Heineke and how efficient he was. Like, okay, he's like you said, not the greatest arm, but he was dinking and dunking with success. And I, I don't care if you're throwing ten yards and getting a completion versus. He sort of yards. reminded me of Colt McCoy a little bit. Heineke a little did. Bit. A little bit, a little bit of Alex Smith in there too, because Alex plays a similar. Alex has got a game. gun compared to Heineke, though. Oh, but yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm just talking. They're looking more West Coast style than Haskins, who is like 1950s. Yeah, I mean, and look, I mean, they were going no huddle there at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying that Taylor Heineke can do that again if a team has a week sure. to prepare for him. But he came in and was great. Yeah, that that offense looked like a completely different team in terms of performance, because he was able to read the field, get the ball out accurately right. and on time. He, and that's something what wasn't there. He moved and ran for a yeah, first down. And that's, or... uh, Haskins just can't do it. No. He just hasn't done it. At least he has not done it really much at all to date in his NFL career. Haskins Maybe he'll get there. Scrambles where he, you know, got the pass to Sims and then that one to uh, the other Sims. And, and uh, frankly, yeah. the Sim, the cam Sims one, the 50 yard to cam Don't Sims was lucky. Yeah. I mean, he was literally standing there doing nothing on the sidelines right. completely alone. He's just that was just a, nine arms, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that was just a complete and total bust. Right. That even any quarterback could have made this. So he got really lucky there. And he got I also got lucky with Robert Foster made an outstanding run, mm -hmm. you know, on his catch that he made. The twenty eight yarder. Outstanding. He got twenty yards of yak out of that. Yeah. You know, if you take those two plays away, Haskins' day looks really, really, but like epically bad. Yeah. If you take those two plays out. Yeah. Um, airing of grievances, another one. Cam Sims dropping way too much. Like, if you're the big body guy, yeah, I'm he sorry. didn't have a good day. You, you have to make those catches. You know, like that one that squirted between his legs, that, was, that should have been an easy catch for him. Yeah. yeah, he didn't have a good day. I mean, I like Cam Sims, but he's dropped the balls here and there throughout his NFL career, and he did today for sure. Yeah, this kind of been the book on him, you know. Well, and the and the long one that I was talking about with Robbie, that kind of that fade pattern, it, you know. Granted, tough catch, NFL level catch, but he should have had it. Yes, that was a drop. Uh, yeah. If you're going to be an NFL receiver, you you need to come down with that. I could have made that catch, but. I was just a crappy high school player. Right. He's and, an NFL and, player and he needs to make it. And Steve, you're not six foot five. No, no. right. Right. <laughs> you're, you're, whatever the opposite of six foot five is, is you. <laughs> hey, I'm like, I'm five nine with shoes on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, the opposite of six foot five. The military measured me every year and I was five eight and a half exactly without <laughs> shoes on. So I'm almost at Cam's level. I'll get there one day. Right. I'm still growing. <laughs> Just you, you got to get some of those uh, things so you can hang upside down in a doorway every day. <laughs> I'm just going to call Tom Cruise and see what he does to uh, fake he, his height. He walks on Apple boxes. That's what he does. Because <laughs> Tom Cruise is like 5'7 if he's lucky. Well, you know? I mean, you know that famous shot from Top Gun where he and uh, the guy from ER are walking next to each other uh, on the – I think it's on the aircraft carrier. I don't, and they high five as they're walking away from their plane. Oh, yeah, 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 they, yeah. Yeah, they they dug a trench for the other guy because he is like 6'3". And they couldn't <laughs> they have dug him a be trench. taller than Tom Cruise. <laughs> so they, they had to dug a, a dig a trench. <laughs> anyway, so we'll back to back to this yeah. game. Um, so that's Haskins. Look, there's no doubt he was terrible. There's no defending this game at all. No. And, and if what Robbie was saying is true, that he ducked out of his press, I'm we'll sure try that to, is. you know, he was, we'll try to find that. I mean, yeah, Robbie's, Richmond Times no, guy. Mark. Robbie's not making it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's probably true. Um, I mean, I, you can't cut him. No. I mean, you could, but that's pointless. There's no purpose in cutting him, but you definitely go. He goes inactive the, as far as I'm only, concerned. Well, there is a point to cutting him and that is it tells the rest of this team. You can't act this way anymore. Yeah. So, but here's the thing. So his cap it this year is three point two three million, right. a little under three point two three point two three million. He's got a dead cap, total dead cap of seven point five million, and so that gets uh, that's post June one, which means that you roll another four or so over to next year. Okay. So now, you if take you a seven point five this year and four next year. Yeah. Now, if you just wait till after the season's over, his total dead cap next year is eight point five million. He's got a cap it in twenty one of three point nine million, 
a total dead cap of 8.5. So you could make getting rid of him probably work and not lose too much if you wait till next year, at least till after the league year is over. Hold on. No, what you're saying would make me think the opposite, though. I would think if I cut him this year, I'm taking more of that cap hit all of a sudden. No, 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 no. Because the total cap hit now is 11.5. Okay, and so that the, so it's three million more now than it would be if you wait till the after the league year is over, four million. No, wait, eight point. Yeah, three million. So it, his cat total dead cap money is three million more now than it would be next year. However, you split it up pre June one, post June one. So it's ad, more advantageous to Washington to hang on to him on the roster until the league year is over. Okay, Did you I mean, follow me. I, I guess so. I. The way you were saying it, I was thinking if you took it now, you would take that whole $11 million hit or a bulk of it this year with one yeah, more but, to go. Yeah, but you see, I'm just – I'll look it up here real fast. I With the 8.5 I gave you was just the total for next year. If you right. give me one second, I'm going to see and check – how it would be split up in a post June one cut. But yeah. point is, it's a big hit, okay? What I was saying with Robbie is – when Robbie brought this up is – they could cut him and yeah, they would lose some cap space, but it doesn't really matter right now. I mean, if they lose cap space this year, no, no. it really doesn't. That, and that's why I'm saying if you would, if it lessens your hit and cut them now to cut them now, why not? I, I mean, you're going to lose cap space by cut. You're going to have more, less cap space by having him off the roster than you will on the roster. Right. My point is that they have the space and they could, and be it. fine because they're not going to sign a expensive player at the you know some free agent. That's not going to happen. And they're not going to trade for anybody now because the trade deadline's passed. Right. So right. they could do it and be fine. Now, does he deserve to be cut? I, I just wouldn't mess with it. I, what I would do is I just deactivate him, unless he truly did like. If if they said, hey, look, you got to go out and do your press, and he said, screw you, I'm out. Yeah, yeah maybe you cut, maybe you cut yeah, him. Uh, in. Yeah, th- there would have to be more behind the scenes then. If there's just like an open rebellion by this kid, yeah, maybe you need to get rid of him. But uh, if it was just a bad game, sure. I mean, play Heineke or Smith or whoever and deactivate him. You know, fine. Yeah, I think you have to do that. Th- at the bare yeah. minimum, you have to basically p- tell him he's fourth string or get. Okay, so yeah. if you so, <laughs> um, if they waited until a post. June 1st release next year, meaning June 2021. Right. Then the dead cap for 21 would be 6.3 million, um, ver- and which would mean a 2.4 million dollar hit having him leave the roster. In so if, right? it would cost more even post June one to have him off the roster than on the roster. Right. I knew that. Even uh, you, they could trade him at a savings. Mm-hmm. They could do a post June one trade of him as a savings, but now you're talking about trading him after the draft. So it's it's it, they would have to decide we are willing to take we are will have willing to have money leave our pocket to make this guy go away. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Well, uh, and th- I mean they're gonna have to make that decision no matter what at this point. Like you're gonna lose money on him if you cut him next week, next month. I, yeah. I would maybe try to trade him for a bag of Doritos or something. That's, I, I think, do. probably what I would I mean, do. Sure. And, you should always try and trade a guy before you cut him. Like that's, that's, well, especially this situation, yeah. you know, because I think the a lot of the, the guarantee money is going to go away. And, you know, um, I, that's what I would I would try to trade him. You probably after get the more than a, like, hey, I'll swap seventh round picks or something kind of deal. But uh, Yeah, I, I know. That's what I mean. A bag of Doritos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a conditional seventh rounder for, you know, Dwayne Haskins at this point. Just to make it end. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. there's I, I think today was truly the end for this kid. There's Absolutely. no going. I don't think there was a going back anyway, but there's no going back from what happened in today. You know, and, and by the way, Kime said Haskins declined to speak to the media. So <clears throat> there you go. Yep. Uh, I mean, look, that's yeah. different than see, there's a difference between a guy in a locker room going, I don't want to talk and him having a scheduled presser that he's skipping. Right. You know that. And if the team said you need to do this and he just said, no, I'm out deuces. Right. That's yeah. If they let him skip it, we don't know really what happened. If they said, no, you can skip it. That's one thing, but we'll have to figure out what happened. Well, and again, you know, there are contractual things that say if you're the starting quarterback, you, you can't to. just bail on media. Right. You know, the CBA requires you to do to not do that. Right. That's a union thing. That's why um, 
uh, Marshawn Lynch would, you know, years ago would get up there and go, I'm just here so I don't get fined. That's it, Marshawn Lynch is a moron, first of all. But that whole thing he did at those pressers yeah, was just that, so yeah. he could skate on the CBA requirement to do media. That's what now, that was all but then about. He still ended up getting fined at first. Remember, because it wasn't truly. Yeah. You have to uh, answer the questions. Even yeah, if you, you have to get up there. Answers. Even if you just give two-word answers, you have to participate. Right, and that's so, what he ended up doing. He just would go, yeah, no, no, I'm right. not doing that. Yep. Right. You know, he just wanted right. it done. So, uh, yeah, I mean, look, Haskins at halftime, 6 for 15 for 36 yards. Right. Two interceptions. I, I can't blame that fumble that wasn't thing on him, but he did throw two interceptions. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that is on him. Well, the – okay, I know it was, you know, last minute drive or last second drive that second interception, but you threw a ball to Steve Sims who's triple covered. To, and he to, did that more than once and yeah. got lucky a couple times. Yeah, but Steve Sims is a little little guy. You're not going to fit a ball in especially not a deep pass like that where you know, he's got to jump up and out jump three corners or three defensive Yeah, backs. and he's like my height. Yeah. I, I he might even be shorter than you, Steve. Like that's saying he, a lot. He's a tiny guy. <laughs> he's he's wee. Yes. He, <laughs> we we got him shoes with little curly toes. He's a small man. <laughs> he's not that small by human standards. He he's lives small in by a tree. Why? He's small. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, wait a minute. I, I feel like I have to defend this guy now. No, no, you don't. I'm just making elf jokes. That's all I'm. He's five ten, man. He's not that small. <laughs> So was Santana Moss. Uh huh. <laughs> hey, yeah. Sims listed at five ten. Okay. But yeah, point is that it's stupid, stupid, stupid. There's no He's defending not the guy any you go of this. to with that pass. Period. No, no. And then you threw it into triple coverage, and I mean that was terrible. the The other one was kind of like an underthrown ball, and I can't remember who made that pick. Was Was it a linebacker or somebody? I don't know. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that one was equally bad. Um. Because I think he had an open shot if Essence hadn't underthrown it. Um, well, the two interceptions were Trey Boston and Tyre Whitehead. So yeah. Boston being the safety and Whitehead being the linebacker. So okay. the the one he you're talking about was the linebacker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, just a bad game um, from Haskins. Uh, now, the one thing, bright spot on offense, uh, let's, let's do at least one positive. Absolutely. Uh, Ant- Antonio Gibson was running the hell out of that ball in the first half. He was. <laughs> you know, uh, for a guy who's got turf toe, he was running the hell out of it. So He um, looks better and better every year. If you look, if, if you game, compare yeah. his film from the beginning of the year and at Memphis, from where he is now, he, he, see, there, when he I did like his film study of his, back now. Yeah, when I did his film study in college, from his college film, mm-hmm. I thought he was a running back because he was, number one, he just was he's not a good route runner. And he just isn't. And what he was doing was making a lot of plays with his athleticism, not really his ability to run routes and, you know, cut and all this stuff. And his and his body type is thick, you know. And and so when he was a running back, he would explode through these holes. He wasn't really an A gap power back, but he was able to use his athleticism to explode through holes, mm-hmm. you know, from, you know, from, uh, you know, get, he'd get the handoff way deep, you know, three or four yards deep. And that's, he can, he still does that, but he's gotten a lot better at running gaps yeah. than he ever did. I think he's going to be a good running, but I still think Washington needs to probably draft a Mr. Inside to his Mr. Outside, but it's not a huge, like, oh my God, round one need anymore. I don't no, think. No, I, I mean, it was never in my mind. First off, round, running backs are never a round one need. Anymore. Well, I mean, if you got Adrian Peterson sitting there, you probably maybe, need to take. Maybe, you know? but I mean, we we don't know how round one running backs tend to go. You know, like no, actually, I proved. If you go back to my um, my four part draft analysis series, which started as one comment in our comment section, it turned into four two thousand word analysis with charts in it. The running first round running backs actually do pretty well. They actually do. It's quarterbacks that are just horrible in the first round. Those are terrible. So if you find a good running back, you need to do it. But the odds of finding one. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 it's certainly washing those other needs is my point. And really, the, the thing is they need a big body guy. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and I've looked at some – there's no, you know, 250 monster running back in this class mm-hmm. that stands out. You know, there, so, there's usually at least one. We just don't have one this year. Like, yeah. you'll get guys in the 220s, but those are just average. 
running back. Yeah. So uh, anyway, you know, the, the the in terms of this game, the broadcast crew pointed out that crew pointed out that without Terry McLaurin in there, this receiver core is just woeful. Yeah. It's 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 plain white milk. You know, in terms of, you know, that's it, it's it's skim it, milk. It's not even like two percent. Yeah, it's two percent. Yeah, it's skim milk is what it is as compared to, you know, Jack Daniels. Right. That's what it is. Right. Uh, um, yeah. There's nobody threatens you at all. I mean, Logan Thomas has kind of proven himself, but nobody scares anybody on this. No. Uh, on this crew. And Cam Sims could if he could hang on to the ball and he just didn't today. You know. Yeah. Uh, AGG so far. Hasn't done nothing. Uh, well, I don't know what we expected. What was he, a fourth-round, fifth-round pick? Look, we, we've seen guys from, like that come in and at least do something. Like, to pat myself on the back, I told yeah. everybody in my draft analysis that this kid would take time sure. because he just – the what he was doing at uh, Liberty was out-athleting you know, smaller teams and his quarterback was terrible. And so all those crazy catches he was making was because the quarterback was just horrible by NFL standards. He's just not ready yet. He'll get there. He's not ready. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, things looked a little better with Heineke, but you know, Pittsburgh or not Pittsburgh, uh, the Panthers were, um, you know, sitting back. It was also, more. yeah, that, and it was, you know, they were running a hurry up offense. Um, right. You know, a lot of no huddle. I, I think if you game plan for Heineke, uh, you know, it won't probably go as well. But look, uh, uh, what I said, remember, you know, what I said to Robbie, I still stand by it. He looked totally unrattled at all. He, you he know, looked like he, a guy who, uh, I think you said this as well, he actually knew where he wanted to go with the ball. Yes. Like, and that was the difference. Haskins, he knew the offense. Yeah. Haskins. He's been there lost. like, what, two a week? Yeah. How long has he been here? Yeah. Uh, I mean, not long. Uh, very impressed by what what that kid came in and did. Sure. Really. Me too. Me too. Um, yeah, I guess we should talk about the defense a little. I think they, you know, I saw a lot of criticism of them, especially when they there was that eight yard or eight run uh, drive for a touchdown where you know they just ran it down their throats. But overall, the defense played okay. I, I don't put a lot of this on the defense. Well, I mean, the thing is. The Panthers' offense isn't anything to write home about. No, you know, and so I didn't think they had a great day necessarily. You know, I don't think they really played their best, uh, and they did let the Panthers run on them. But at the end of the day, the defense allowed 14 points, right? Which is more than enough to win a game. Was it their finest moment, finest hour? Uh, no, but they certainly did enough to give Washington the opportunity to win a game that they should have won if the quarterback had been in any way competent, which yeah. he wasn't. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I and, you know, we also have to keep in mind when your offense is basically going three and out the first quarter, you're gassing the defense pretty quickly, you know? Yeah, it, yeah, it wasn't. Like I said, I think I can sum up the defense by saying it was not their finest hour. No. Uh, you know, certainly in the first half, they were getting gashed in the interior in the run game. You know, right in the middle of our vaunted defensive tackles and everything. But I, I find it hard to critique them too much when you give up 14 points. Right. And can we say, by the way, I'm sick and tired of Steve Sims as a punt returner. He does absolutely nothing, no. less than zero in punt returns. And now he gave away a touchdown. I'm done with that kid, too. I, Isaiah Wright needs to, to be the kick returner I mean, next now, week. Isaiah Wright did have a fumble last time he was out there, which is why that's true. him. Um, I, I would say Antonio Gibson needs to do it, but he's too valuable to risk. Sure, I, I understand that. Um, you know, I don't know what you do. It, it seems to me that none of these guys, and this might be a coaching thing, I don't know if they're getting told, like, getting good enough scouting reports on where these punters are going to put the ball. Because, like, the problem with Sims is he's way out of position on a lot of these. Well, the problem with Sims is that the ball hit him directly in the hands and went straight through his arms. Well, that too. That was the ball. That was the problem this time. Yeah, that was the problem. That has but nothing to do with, with anything, but Steve Sims dropped it. That he went to fair catch, but he was too far away to get to it. Like It was a really dumb decision, and the ball rolled another, what, five, ten it yards? It rolled another ten yards and put him yeah. inside the ten, I think, instead of... Okay, so here's the depth chart at punt return, according to Washington's website. The Redskins are the whatever's website. Steve Sims, Danny Johnson, Isaiah Wright. 
So Danny Johnson would be next up. I, I'd, I'd say they need to put Johnson in there. Yeah, all he does is fair catch it, but at least he catches it. At least he didn't give up a touchdown, yeah. for God's sakes. Yeah. <laughs> a uh, touchdown, which proved to be important because the game would have changed if they had only been down. If you erase the fumble that wasn't, and mm-hmm. give Washington a field goal there because they were driving, if I recall, at least yeah. by their standards. And you take away the touchdown; it's a much different game. I mean, uh, you can play these hypotheticals; don't really matter, and that's it is what it is. But what I'm saying is, a combination of tough refereeing and mistakes by Washington doomed this team, Absolutely. even despite the Dwayne Haskins poor yeah, play. Yeah. They that's beat themselves saying. more than they, you know, got beaten. Carolina didn't really do much in yeah. this game. No, Carolina just showed up and executed okay. Uh, you know, but, they didn't make huge mistakes. No. And Teddy Bridgewater, you know, wasn't great, but he well, was he good enough. Turnovers, you know, by chasing. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. But, um, well, yeah, the, I mean, the one was, yeah, the, I guess they both were caused by chase. Yeah, that's what yeah. I meant. That's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. I know the yeah. interception gets credited not to him, but, but it was chase is the one who caused the interception to happen right yeah right which he's done that before too like you know is there any legitimate competition for this guy for defensive rookie of the year at this point somebody else will get the nod just because we're a terrible team you know that's how it happens yeah i guess but i mean you know i I mean the only thing chase doesn't have is a ton of sacks other than that he's done everything i certainly hope you think he deserves the defensive rookie of the year honor i I think if you watched his film he is so much more of a presence than his numbers tell because yeah he does cause he's probably caused three interceptions by doing things like that well that's why i wonder whoever i don't know who votes on that award but i can guarantee they haven't watched this film no i guarantee i guarantee you that i mean well it's like with the pro bowl too you know it's all popularity contest and that's probably the only thing that's got he's got going for him is he's the number two pick so he's a big name so he might win because of that but maybe uh you know him playing here doesn't help him (laughs) in terms of reputation no 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 certainly not (laughs) We, we know how that goes um uh, it, look, this was a really frustrating game, okay? It was, and, and it was a game that Washington truly had a should have probably won this game. I do put a lot of this on Dwayne. The offense just looked horrible. I, I under... put a lot of it on Dwayne, and I put a lot of it on – and people rip on me for this. I put a lot of this these struggles on Scott Turner. He has not had – I don't care who the quarterback is. He has not had a single game plan that's gone well for them. Uh, on the offense, other than Dallas, and Dallas is terrible, you know, like, we've not done well under his offense. Uh, we criticized them a lot, at the, all of them, and Jamal did too, all of us toward the beginning of the year, and we started winning games and right. kind of let that go, um, but I don't think Scott's been great. No, I mean, uh, you know, a bottom-ranked offense, how could you, Yeah, we, we don't score in the first quarter, like, you know. Okay, so let me go over this, we're going to go over this in a game preview, but... Where we are now is this. Washington and Dallas are tied at 6-9. and nine. Right. The, the New York Giants are 5-10. and 10. Philadelphia Eagles, 4-10 and 10 and 1. They're out of it. So next week, if Washington beats the Eagles, they win. They control their own destiny because we they have beaten Dallas twice. Right. Now, if the Giants beat Dallas and Philadelphia beats Washington, at that point then... Washington still wins because they will be tied with Dallas at six and ten. No, that's wrong. No, the no. Giants will win. Right. The Giants the will be Giants... six and ten. The Giants have the tiebreaker over Washington. Right. And they have the tiebreaker over Dallas because they beat Dallas at one. So it's we'd have to look at the scenario, the tiebreakers between Dallas and the Giants. Right. At that point, there's no way Philadelphia can win it, but it's going to come down to those two games. Exactly. Exactly. And, and the bottom line is, Washington, despite it all, Washington still controls their own destiny. It only goes haywire if they lose to to the Eagles and then the Giants, and then it comes down to the Giants-Cowboys game. Let me look real fast. I don't remember who. Okay, so, yeah, so they lost to – the Giants lost to the Cowboys they in the early part that. of the year. Yeah. So it's split one and one, so then you have to get down to – division records and we'll have all that for right, the right. next preview show. Yeah. Um what happens if Alex Smith isn't ready to go and Rivera somehow makes a decision to go back to Haskins? Like, I don't see how can he possibly do that at yeah. this point. Yeah. Seriously. That's, that's what I meant. 
I mean, I, I, I think you got to go with, out there in the second half. Like, I think you got to go with Taylor. Yeah. Heineke. Yeah. And then yeah. you just, you know what? You make Montez the backup and you roll, hope for the best, you know? Right. Right. That I is. just don't think, especially if he really did skip his media and when he wasn't supposed to, you, I'd be done with you totally if yeah. that happened. Yeah, me too. I, again, I wouldn't cut him for you know, necessarily for cat. You'd have to think through the salary cap ramifications, but what he would be is inactive at a minimum for me. Yeah, I, I just don't know what happens because we are in the last part, part of the season. I don't know how salary cap gets prorated. I, I do. I'm telling you. I mean, the, the 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 dead cap hit this year would be seven and a half. Right now, it'd be seven and a half million. Right. And but it would roll four over next year. Whereas if you waited, then the bottom line is so 2020. They would lo- they're going to lose money. The only way they can't lose money getting rid of him is trading him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, no, I it, understand that. I, I, I meant, is it better to take a, a hit this year if it lessens it next year? No, 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 no. Because either way. The total amount they lose is less next year than this year. Just okay. it's just going to be split up over. It's going to be split over 2021, 2022 if they do a post June yeah, yeah, one hit. Part. I get that yeah. part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's all. It's better to wait. No matter what, it's better to wait. They can just send him home. They can basically say if they really want to pull. Didn't this happen to Keyshawn Johnson years ago? Just say, look, dude, we're done. You're inactive. We're not cutting you, but we don't want you around. Go home. Just- Conduct detrimental. Just leave. Go home. It's the last week of the season. Just yeah. go. You could, if you really wanted to, you could do that. It depends on what happened. We don't really know what happened in the locker room. All we saw is a tweet. Robbie saw a tweet from somebody. Well, that's what happened. Well, saw something from John about it. But yeah, yeah, I just checked. Yeah, that's true. So, but we don't really know. No, no, no. Uh, it, it's just, I, I didn't think it would go this badly with him. That's the thing no, that, I didn't either. You know, like I, I, I hadn't, I didn't have high expectations for uh, Haskins, but I thought he'd at least be okay. So I didn't think he'd be this bad. Yeah, this was his worst game, for there's no doubt. Well, I don't know about the yardage and everything. He might have had a lesser yardage one, but from a play on the field standpoint, he looked horrible. And from an emotional it, importance of the game too, you know, looked like he just wasn't. It looked like he wasn't there. Right. Looks. You know, he doesn't like, want to be here. And here's what we've discovered from Haskins. Rivera has tried to push his buttons in a way to kind of like the chips are against you step yeah. up and what is and every time he gets worse. Was I the only one that thought Ron Rivera was going to about to call some crazy um, wildcat play when Haskins ro- ran onto the field? Oh, yeah. there. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> it was him trying to show uh, weirdly showing leadership, I guess. Apparently Chase Young did the same thing. He just wasn't caught on camera. Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever very, seen that. No, it was very weird. It was so weird. <laughs> like, I really thought we were going to have two quarterbacks on the field there for a minute. <laughs> I mean, I would be fine with that because that would throw throw a new look in. But, you know. I, I wouldn't be fine with it at all if they haven't practiced some crazy play like that. Oh, that's in the key that's In fair. the key moment of the game, that was the fourth down. Yeah, that yeah, was it. the key play. It was fourth you don't want to, like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Jamal posted something jokingly that as soon as Haskins came and gave Taylor Haneke a high five, he, his arm went to crap. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to bash on this kid too much. I mean, it's his life and it's his career and it's going right down the toilet. And at that level, I feel bad for him. But I don't feel bad at all. If he had a really bad attitude and skipped media, my sympathy for you ends you know right what, there. Steve? He's made more in two years than I've made in 20. So I'm not going to feel too bad for him. You know, yeah, like, no, I, I b- believe me, I don't either. But yeah. at some level, you know, I hate to see a first round pick get ruined by a team. Sure. Ruin because the Washington ruined him. They, you know, it's not all on Haskins. I mean, they could have handled him totally differently, going all the way back to last year, and they didn't. You know, but today I'm just done with him. Today I'm really done with the kid. Yeah, I really. Am. I, I, look, I, I don't think Washington's blameless, but no. in the end. You, it, it, it's also on him as a player, you know, like he, oh, a hundred, I yeah. believe me, I'm all about that personal yeah, responsibility. Yeah, I, know, I, know. What, I it, just mean they it, could have definitely handled him in a way sure. this, he came in a bad, really, really awful situation. And then they made the awful situation a lot worse by the way they handled him. So he didn't really ever really have much of a chance, but, no, no, no. but at the end of the day, it's you're, you're responsible for your own play and I had to live up to it. Right. You hadn't done it. Yeah, and it's a shame. Yeah. 
All right. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to do game balls. Do you want to do game balls? Yeah, of course. We all have right, to do game. Right, this is our game. thing, dude. We have to do game balls. We have <laughs> okay. to force ourselves to do it. All right. Then you can go first. I got to think. As well. <laughs> You're going to make me do this? Wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. No, okay. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to give Taylor Heineke the game ball. Okay. Um, I, I think Antonio Gibson's worthy of consideration, too. But between, those two guys are really kind of about it. Um, but Taylor came into a terrible situation, you know, very stressful situation rather, and did well as could be. So I think Tyler, Taylor Heineke deserves a game ball, even in a loss. Uh, and on defense, I mean, gosh, no one really stuck out too much. I mean, Cole Holcomb had 11, um, 11 tackles, but I think at the end of it all, Chase Young is the one that made the most impact. He didn't have a great game particularly, I didn't think, but he did cause two turnovers. And so, from that respect, I'll give him the defensive game ball. You, you know, it does say something about him, though, when we're like, he caused two defensive turnovers. That's not a great game for him. Well, but those <laughs> were sort of his only impact yeah, plays. Yeah, I know. I know, I know what you're had. saying, but yeah. you know what? If a guy causes two turnovers a game, I don't care what else he it. does. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Right. I'll usually take that from anybody. Um, I, I think I'm going to kind of match you, dude. It's got to be Chase Young on defense. No one else really showed up and blew you away and yeah Heineke you came in last minute and did tried you know you did more than the other guy so uh I guess those would be the one-two punch good for them you know we yep. lost though so yeah it's a deflated game ball for it's sure definitely deflated game ball you, you know maybe you could give it to the kickers the kickers did a good job they didn't screw anything I, up again I, I mean Dustin hardly had an opportunity to kick anything well he kicked two did field he? goals did he really? It seemed like he wasn't out there at all. Did he really kick two? He did kick two field goals, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He 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 just did what he does, you know. Well, I'm gonna have my normal Dustin Hopkins, you know, bonus takeaway here published on Tuesday, so we'll <laughs> we'll find his stats because okay. I did that because everybody's bashing the guy, you know. So let's just track him and see how yeah. bad he really is. I mean, look, he's had a bad year overall, but for him, you know, it's been an by his year. standards, he has, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't, but yeah, people get over. Don't ever. I, I always say you, you shouldn't blame any losses on a kicker. Just it's the rest of the team's fault usually. You know. Hey, I mean, I would have a hard time not blaming the Giants kicker in the nineteen ninety oh, yeah, sure. Super Bowl. Sure. That was hard time not blaming that guy for that loss, and he got cut because of it. He did. You know, kickers have gotten cut for that. Um, I'm going way back now. Yeah, you are. Well, we've got a couple of those in DC history. You know, the the big one that stands out is in, what was that, maybe 97, you know, when Norv Turner was the coach, yeah. and they were in the they were in the second round of the playoffs, and they were down by three points, if you guys don't remember this, and they were lining up for a last-second field goal, not, maybe not a lot, but a few seconds, maybe less than a minute, and the snap was blown. I think, like, Brad Johnson was the holder and couldn't get the snap down. It was the long snapper who blew it. Yeah, it, you're was, right. It, it was a bad snap, and then yeah. Brad Johnson could not get the ball down, I think, and then the the kick didn't even get a chance to get kicked. And, and you know, you know, an interesting perspective on that. Go and listen to Rick's show because he talked a lot about that. Rick or who? Or Rick, Doc, Snyder. Oh, Rick Snyder. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he talked a lot about that about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. I don't even remember that. I've listened to it. I've slept since then. Uh, it, well, remember it? He was asked, "Are there any ghosts that haunt FedEx Field?" Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And the long snapper, who was the brother of the kicker, and I can't remember their names right now. Uh, no. But he actually died not long after missing that snap. because I didn't know that, he did? Yeah. Oh, my God, I forgot about that. Yeah. 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 Rick, Rick talks about it on his show, but he, and yeah. he, he knew the guys well, so he's got a story about it. Um, so people, Anyway, that's the one that sticks out in my head is the yeah. one that really haunted Sansa's team is that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there have been a couple <laughs> over the years. Um, yeah. Well— Guys, I think that should wrap it up. Guys, guys. We're way over time. We're way over time. We had Robbie on. Robbie, you know. But we're over a self-imposed time limit that yeah. isn't really a time this limit. This was a venting show. <laughs> it was. It was really just We went a little longer. We want to keep you guys interested, but we went a little long because we were venting and ranting about a bunch of things. Right, right. And then we had a guest. So. Right. Thanks right, to guys. Robbie for coming on. That was really cool. By the way, Jamal wasn't here in case you 
can figure that out. Right. That's why you didn't hear his voice. That's why you didn't hear his voice for 55 minutes. <laughs> that would be funny. Well, Jamal was here the whole time. We just didn't let him talk. He just didn't say anything. <laughs> he was so He's upset. Just mad. <laughs> uh, that'd be funny. Okay, guys, that should. I think I've tried to wrap this up five times now. Later. <laughs> and bye, Jamal. Bye, Jamal. Ha, 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 ha.